in the circumstances, ask him, won't he keep you while the world is going chaotic around you? But yet, he has you in the palm of his hands. Ask him. He proved positive of what he will do. He'll do it. And I dare you, I dare you, by to ask him. I, I, I double dare you by faith and then trust him on top of that. I dare you to. He'll do it because he did it for me. I, I know he'll do it. He, he's the same God that my grandma served that brought them through. I, I'm still serving the same God. His grace expands from eternity to eternity. He, he won't run out of grace. And you can't run out of enough work trying to get it because you can't earn it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He's awesome. He's awesome. In all of his ways. And his attributes. His attributes. His attributes. Uh, somebody going to get it in a minute. His attributes. He's good. Hey, he's good. If, if you can just grab on to the coattail of the attributes, if you can just love one another, if you can just pray for one another, his attributes are beyond perfection. And he's a God that is not only worthy, but he is a God that has never extended a promise and was not able to keep his promise. I, I, I think scripture tells us that, uh, uh, that in that way. I, I think scripture tells us that uh, me, me personally, I'm fully assured. I don't know about you, but, but I'm fully assured that 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 he promised He's also able to perform. Don't nobody have to tell me. It doesn't have to be written on the wall. I don't have to see it somewhere in somebody else. I'm just telling you from my own personal experience. You see, there comes a time in my life and in your life that there has to be a personal exchange. And when, and when you have or have had the personal exchange, I tell you each and every Sunday, it comes with a benefit package. It, it comes with things that the enemy can't provide. It, it comes with things the enemy cannot give you. He can't even promise them to you. And then if he says it, all you've got to do is go back to the original manuscript. Ask Jesus, won't he try it? And tell him, this is not what my father said. Because he's proof positive. That if he said it, it's in his word. Then we don't have to look for confirmation. It is affirmation. His word does not need to be confirmed. It's already confirmed. I just need you to affirm it. He's already said it. It's already written. So as, as, as a believer, as his child, as his son, I'm just declaring and decreeing on the promises, Pastor, that's already been given unto me. I'm standing solid on what I know. Can't nobody change my mind. Can't nobody send me a check big enough in the mail. Can't nobody make a promise deep enough. I'm telling you. Hey. I know what he'll do. Bless the name of the Lord today. For his word. There's a word this morning, y'all. I mean, we came and I know it's a 
a little warm in the sanctuary today, but guess what? He's still able. The word this morning is going to be coming from Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, verse 23 and 24. I feel like a book standing here today because it's a familiar passage of, of Scripture. Jeremiah 10, verses 23 and verse 24. That weeping prophet. You, you know the one that said, Lord, your people just won't be right. No matter what I do, they, they just won't. Jeremiah 10, 23 and 24, verse number 23 reads, Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Jeremiah says, oh, Lord, it's personal, y'all. Correct me. But with judgment, with your justice, Lord. Not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. We've been talking in the theme of direction over the course of the last several weeks. And this morning I'm going to talk from the subject, don't become deaf to his direction. Don't become deaf to his direction. Much has happened, much is happening. Things are happening each and every day. Things challenge us each and every day. But church, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I find it difficult to stay the course, to keep my mind stayed, to, to, to keep my actions to match with the thoughts of my mind. Because there is a lot happening that will distract you if you're not careful. There are things going on that is intentionally trying to distract you. But you do understand today that the enemy does not have to destroy you if he can distract you. You'll destroy yourself. You see, you've got to come to a plight intentionally in this walk. Not yesterday, but this morning in this walk. And you must ask Yourself the question, not the person sitting beside you, not the person in your household, not your children, but you must ask yourself, am I trying to discover the will of God for my life with intention? Because right in the midst of all that's happening, there is a valid and very present attempt from the enemy to cause paralysis to set in and want you to think that the direction you have is okay. What you're doing is good enough. And then he will even tell you, don't worry about trying to overthink it because you already have it figured out. You see, but church, hear me today. Can I just talk with you for a minute? Hear me today, if you care about your destination, you need to be intentional about your direction. You see, because your destination ultimately reflects the direction that you've taken to get to that destination. If you're seeking God's will for your life, don't settle for anything less than the best possible story for your life don't settle for anything less that has been in your past uh, don't settle for anything less that was in your yesterday live your best life in Christ Jesus today you see beloved may I suggest this morning to you stop trying to figure out your own story Stop trying to uh, put it all into the right perspective. 
Because you know and I know a finite mind can never do what an infinite, an infinite mind can do. You see, not only will you struggle trying to figure it all out by yourself, but, but, but what will happen is you will waste time that is impossible for you to regain and to make up for the place that you should have been when you decide ultimately to give it unto God. You see, it's impossible for you to figure it out without Holy Spirit already working it out and then telling you what the plan is. But, but what you can do this morning, hear me, is you can start with a massive dose of humility. The art of learning anything begins when we acknowledge that we don't know everything. You see, I, I can't put water in a bottle that's already full. I, I, I can't knock on a door that's already locked. You see, God will use humility to do great things in you and through you. It's okay to acknowledge you don't know. It's okay to embrace the uncertainties to find a greater clarity in your life. Because there are times in my life, in your life, that there is uh, some clarity that needs to be given. I, I just don't understand it. I don't see it all the way through. Uh, it's okay to be uncertain about what you see rather than take it on your own and try to work out a plan. But if you stay with God, greater clarity will come. One of the things, one of the two things we should do when facing uncertainty is we can either run from it or we can lean into it. What I've discovered in this is this. Our greatest clarity of what's really important can come from those times of great uncertainty about what happens next. What is your next move? Those times force us to focus on what matters most, both to you and to God. That's why, saints of God, we must get intentional about direction. Stop drifting like a bubble, not really sure about where you're going and why, just waiting for somewhere to land to pop. You see, don't just get busy. Get busy intentionally about where you're going and why. You have ex access to divine direction from Holy Spirit. You have access to his word through knowledge of you. Perhaps no piece of advice could be more crucial to the believer than this. We're all at different places and different stages in our maturity level and at our maturity level. You don't know what you don't know. But, but, but hear me today, even though you may think that you see the bigger picture, God has given us access through his word uh, to people who have been there and done that. It's proof positive. Uh, that, 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 that doesn't mean you have to do what they did and how they did it. But what you can gain from their experience is wisdom understanding and knowledge from his word by listening unto his word. The problem with humanity is our presumption of getting beyond this stage in life. You, you know, oftentimes we want to get from where we are to where we think we should be or want to be, but yet we don't know how to get there. We, we think that we want this in my life. I, I think that I want that. I think that I want this to be my next career decision. Where'd you get the information from and where's it based on for the next move in your life? Is, is it that you relied on yourself? Is it rely, you relied on the information that you've gotten from the friend you talked to or, or from the neighbor that, 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 that was talking this morning over the fence? You, you see, we get to a point when we think we've got most things already somewhat figured out and we have a way forward already and yet time and time again, in various ways and in various reasons, we find ourselves in all sorts of trouble, covering up the fact that we are directionally deaf and God is laughing at us because we've tried to do it every way except for his way. 
You, you see, in the text, unless I hold you long this morning, in the text this morning, get this now, Jeremiah saw such trouble coming from Judah, for Judah, I'm sorry. The people, hear me today, had taken their time and they had built metallic images and uh, they had manufactured things with their own hand. Uh, the, the leaders of Judah were involved in high stake political maneuvering, uh, much like it is in the country that you and I live in now, much like it is in our present government. They all thought they had things sort of figured out and were acting in their own best interests. But Jeremiah, <laughs> the weeping prophet, knew that the word of the Lord from Yahweh God had already come. Uh, Jeremiah knew that all that they were putting themselves through would quickly come to nothing. Uh, Jeremiah understood that everything that they were going through in their present, trying to make progress, was going to end up taking them nowhere. The idols would be quickly proven worthless. The political maneuvering would end with the Babylonian army at Jerusalem's gate. Why? Because the men of Judah chose to be deaf to God's direction and consult direction from within themselves and from within an idol God. When humans start thinking they can figure it out, that's when things start to go very bad. I'm getting there. Man needs someone to show him the way. But instead, man will do everything within his means to refuse to acknowledge his need, and seek help from God. Yeah. Yet, the truth of God's word warns us and tells us this is a broad way and narrow way. You, you see, the broad way is in and of yourself, depending on your efforts, depending on your directions for your own life. This way is considered broad because man's ego makes great room for it and uh, for the road that he is going to walk on. Uh, have you ever made a situation what it wasn't in your mind? H have you ever looked at it and, and, and you thought with your own finite, finite power and mind, you're going to be able to change the nucleus of what you're looking at? H have you ever had a case where uh, you, you just thought that I just need to put a little, bo little bit more of me in the situation? All but to find out it was too much me, not enough them, and God was absent. You, you see, there comes a time when we as men have to not only acknowledge but understand we can't direct ourselves. But the Bible says man's way lead to destruction because we have a disease called sin. Sin is a mighty foe because it deceives and distorts our view of direction in life. It makes us think we know where we are going when we are really lost. The first man, Adam, proved man is no match for sin and man's way will end in death. The Bible is full of examples of men trying to find their own way. Acts Samson found he could not outmuscle sin to find this way. Acts Solomon uh, found out that he could not outwit sin to find this way. Ask Jonah, he found out that he could not outrun sin to find this way. Ask David, he found out that he could not outmaneuver sin to find his way. Ask Saul of Tarsus uh, that tried to outpire sin but found out he could not find his way. But there is good news this morning for the directionally deaf man who is willing to acknowledge his need for direction concerning the way of life. God instructed Jeremiah in chapter number seven, as I step into the text this morning, to pray for the people, to not pray for the people, so he did not. Instead, we find ourselves at the heart of our text this morning. Jeremiah prays for himself as a representative of the nation. Once again, he identified with the pain of the people. He knew his realized conditions when he proudly acknowledged he needs the Lord and he confessed that he needs the Lord. Jeremiah says, I know 
I know, Lord, which is the Hebrew word yada. It is a deeper and a more intellectual and intimate knowledge of who God is in your own life. You see, there comes a time when you just got to stand up, throw your head back and say, Lord, I know you. I know you. I'm going to depend on you. I know what circumstances I'm in. I, I know what the situation seemed like. Jeremiah was in a perilous predicament. But he said, Lord, I know. I, I know, Lord, it, it is a personal and intimate commi commitment and acknowledgement unto the Lord. It is the same connotation if you go back to chapter number one, verse number five, before I formed thee in his mother's womb, I knew thee, the Lord told Jeremiah. I know you because you are my son. I am intimate with you and you are intimate with me. So Jeremiah says in his chapter number 10, I know, Lord, I, I know. He, you see, he, he, he could do nothing on. On his own, that he was going. So Jeremiah was careful about his approach at this time. You, you see, in other words, Jeremiah wanted to remain fruitful in his walk, not fruitless. Jeremiah believed this truth and acted in faith upon it. He understood man's need to acknowledge and live in obedience in a way which was not outside of God, but was outside of him. He, he, he understood that trying to live it his way, it would bring him to nothing. He understood that I've got to stay, step in the Lord and stay there. I, I've got, even when I don't understand it, I've got to hold my position or I will be brought to nothing. You see, Jeremiah understood that outside of God, he's nothing. He also understood that inside of God, he's everything. But even with that, he understood that the people didn't understand. So at this point, I can't come spiritually deaf unto the Lord. I've got to hear continually in the situation that I'm in what God is saying. But like Jeremiah, do you know, do you believe this truth that your way is not in yourself, nor is it in a man who walk to direct his step. Have you trusted in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for the payment for your sins, as payment for you being deaf and to his direction? Uh, and are you allowing Holy Spirit to live in, through, and for your life? That is a question Jeremiah understood the answer to. And he acknowledged that in this chapter number 10. You see, he goes back to the word yada, because if you know the word yada, there is a certain evidence, hear me today, uh, that, that will appear and has an appearance in your life when you have yada in your life. Uh, what do you mean, preacher? If you know him in a yada kind of way, uh, you will be submissive to his will. Uh, you will understand that his will, but not your will. Uh, you will understand that his heart desires are your heart desires in a yada kind of way. You, you see, you'll ask yourself, blow your own horn and move out the way because I'm in yada. You see, I have a submissive spirit toward God and his will for my life. Or am I recalculating what the Lord has given to me in his word? What he said to me in his word, the psalmist says, commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Yeah. You, you see, it must not be my choice, but God's choice. Not my will, but God's will on a deeper level. You, you know, you've got to get off the surface. You've got to go deeper than where you are. Uh, you've got to spend a little bit more time than you've been spending. Uh, you've got to have a stronger heart's desire to go deeper and so that the Holy Spirit will allow you to get in the deep treasures of his word. You see, when I acknowledge that I am a sinner deaf to his directions and I need the Lord's correction, hey, and going on his direction in my life, what I know is that when I accept the Lord's direction in my life, I am no longer now deaf to his direction. Yeah. But now I become not only fruitful, but I become fruit producing. You see, the Hebrew writer penned it this way, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. 
uh, the, uh, and scourge every son who he received. If ye endureth chastening, God dealeth with you as with a son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, there are you bastard and not a son. Uh, the, 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 the Hebrew writer gives us to know that we must be ready and have an intentional plan about God's providence in our lives. Uh, we have to be ready and intentional to avoid our own direction and have, find his direction. We've got to resolve to the fact that God's direction is God's direction and I cannot become deaf to the direction of God. I don't know about you this morning and I don't know who this is for. You must hold on to all things loosely except God. Amen. Don't hold on to things too tightly that the Lord has to pry them out of your hand. As I close this morning, <laughs> new birth, let me just tell you, this story gave to land on my own doorstep. You see, Jeremiah in his chapter number 10 gives me to be in a chapter number 10 in my own life. <laughs> Can I just talk about me? Uh, times in my own life where we have to fight, I have to fight to stay on course and to keep direction and not become deaf to everything that's happening. You see, the fight uh, for my life says that I've got to stay attentive to what God is saying. I, I cannot ever allow my ears to become deaf to his word. With all that's happening in and around me, I cannot allow myself to come uh, deaf to his word. But you see, Jeremiah is in his chapter number 10. But you do know, like Jeremiah, we have a chapter number 9. You, you see, because in Jeremiah's chapter number 9, uh, Jeremiah had resolved to the fact that he told God, Lord, if I could just go into the wilderness and live, then I would be satisfied because your people, Lord, the people that you've given us unto me has not heard your word. They've become spiritually deaf unto your word. Uh, Jeremiah's chapter number nine gives him to know that he has to stop every now and again and say, Lord, I thank you for my chapter number 10. Can I close right here? I thank you for my chapter number 10. Why? Because not only was Jeremiah not praying for the people, but Jeremiah realized that as he had prayed for the people, it was time now that he must pray for himself. You, you see, Jeremiah at this point said, Lord, I know what you've told me, but I also know, Lord, that I'm a man, that I'm a man that walks in the way of his people. Lord, if you would tell me right now, I know what you've said, but Lord, let me take a step back. Pastor Hopper, it's not about Pastor Spencer, it's about me, Lord, and I say to you, oh, Lord. Correct me from my faults. Correct me, Lord, if there is something that I'm not doing right. You see, your chapter number 10 starts with you. It does not start with the person inside you. Your chapter number 10 starts with you not being spiritually deaf. Jeremiah says, I know they're deaf. I know they don't hear you. I know they're serving idols. But before I can tell them anything, oh, Lord, correct me in all of my ways. Lord, I need for you, hey, to correct me. I know, Father God, that I am your servant. I know that I am your prophet. But in that, on my best day, I'm still not good enough. On my best day, I'm still worthy enough. On my best day, I still have to take a minute and say, Lord, correct me, for I am wrong. Jeremiah says that your chapter number 10 starts in the chapter number 9s of your life. Here it is. As we walk and we go, Jeremiah's ministering in a time, much like it is, chaos everywhere. People were not hearing the word of God. People were not hearing the preached word of God. People were not hearing the, 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 the evidences of God. Jeremiah resolved in this chapter number 10 to say this. This is personal for each of you. That I today, Lord, choose not to be spiritually deaf to your direction. 
Watch in the text now. You've got to understand in the text, Jeremiah the prophet was walking in a position that was better than most that was around him. He is in a position that says that he still has to honor God with all that's happened, with all that's being done, with all that I see, I still have to honor God. Even in my present position, even with me doing some things right, even with me saying some things right, Lord, I still need correction. I still need correction so that I can continue to hear from you. You see, just when you think you've got it right, that's just the time you ought to ask the Lord to correct me. Because at that moment, just when you think that you're doing most things right, all things right, that's just the moment that you'll get above yourself. That's just the moment that you'll think more highly of yourself than you really are. Jeremiah says, I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about me, Lord. What am I saying today? It's personal. Before I can start anywhere, before you can start anywhere, it's got to start with you. I cannot come, become spiritually deaf to the direction that you're giving me because the direction that you're giving to Pastor Harper, to Deacon Evers, that's not my direction. I need the direction for me. I need your directions. Thank you, Facebook family and friend, for joining in live with us. We thank you, as always, many other places you could have joined in Sunday morning worship, but you chose to join with us here at the New Birth Church, and we praise the Lord for you. Thank you.